Number 108, a molecule with the formula AB3 in which A and B represent different atoms could have one of three different shapes. Sketch and name the three different shapes that this molecule might have, and then give an example of a molecule or ion that has each shape. Okay, so whenever they're talking about different shapes that we have to find out here, they're, this question is trying to get us to find out different molecular geometries or molecular structures. But I like to use the term molecular geometry. But shape, molecular geometry, molecular structure, they all mean the same thing. And that's where this handy dandy chart comes in. These are all of your molecular geometries that maybe your teacher or professor uh, wants you to memorize. So do whatever you got to do, flashcard it out. If you need to memorize them, just go get it done. Uh, but maybe your teacher or professor is, um, you know, kind, and maybe they'll give this information to you on your test or quiz. But anyway, we got to find the three examples that have A, B, 3. Now, on this little diagram representation, we have A being in the middle, so that is the A. But in this one, there's all X's. But we're going to pretend that the X's are the B's. So in this case, if I'm looking for an A, B, 3 uh, molecular geometry, I just need to have A in the, in, in the middle surrounded by the three B's. And in here, I need A in the middle surrounded by the three X's. So the first one that I see is I see this one. Here's an A in the middle that has the three X's. That would be the three B's. So let's go for it. We have A in the middle surrounded by, and maybe I'll bring this out a little bit. We have A in the middle. I'm just going to, instead of saying the, um, instead of saying the B's, I'll say the X's. So one, oh, just kidding. Instead of saying the X's, I'll say the B's. So we got one B, two, and three. And I think we have to name the shapes. So this shape would be trigonal planar. Maybe I'll put that over here. So all molecules that have this type of uh, molecular geometry or shape, they are trigonal planar. Let's go and find the next one. And I see it right here. This one has an A in the middle surrounded by the three X's or the three B's. The only difference is that it's, it's got a lone pair in the central atom as well. So we'll draw that out as well. So we have A in the middle. I'm just going to... Um, do the B's instead of the X's. So B, B, and B. Now these funky lines just represent that this molecule is three dimensions. And this bond is a thick line. That means that it's coming out at you or coming out of the page. And this line, this dashed line, always represents that this bond is going away from you. And this one is called trigonal pyramid. Um, I learned it as trigonal pyramidal. So maybe I'll just write that in. But they both mean the same exact thing. Okay, and then the last one, I gotta find one more uh, with three of them. Seems like right here. There we go. T-shape. And in order to get that one in, Okay, cool. So I have A in the middle, surrounded by my three B values. So one, two, three. And now we have the two dots. I don't usually write bonds to the dots, so it would kind of look like that. And I guess we'll put this one maybe closer up here. And this one is called T-shape. Okay, so now we just have to Think of the molecules that actually have these types of uh, uh, molecular geometries or the shapes. And this all comes from the valence electrons. So it doesn't really matter you know, which one we, we do. There's going to be many different answers for the examples. But just as long as the theory is correct, you can give a lot of different examples for this. So the first one, we'll say to ourselves, okay, what central atom would be happy if it had three 
bonds. It seems like this one doesn't have the octet, right? Now we can give it the octet by giving a double bond. Keep in mind that these molecular structures, the bonds are not set in stone. The only thing that matters is the uh, correlation between the number of atoms bound and the lone pairs. So we could think about this in terms of being a double bond um, or, you know, just a single bond. It, it doesn't matter. That's where the different examples come in. So maybe we'll say, okay, let's give, I guess we'll give a single, a single line. And I say to myself, okay, who or what atom has one, two, three valence electrons? So I look on the periodic table, table, uh, group 3A or 13, right? The three is a boron. So maybe boron is in the middle. And single bonds, remember the, uh, the elements that only like a single bond is hydrogen. So this could be just all hydrogens. That's fair game. This is BH3. So that works perfectly. BH3 would have trigonal planar uh, molecular geometry. And that's the example for this one. So we're just going to basically do the same thing. What atom in the middle right? What A atom has, or is going to have the, the dots, right? One bond coming out, one bond going away, and one like this. Well, it always comes from the valence electrons. This one had one, two, three, four, five, because all the other uh, electrons on the other side is the other atoms, right? And that's the bond, right? Dot to dot is always a bond. So this one has five, we look in group 5A or 15, and that's nitrogen. So nitrogen could be in the middle here. And now we just have to say the other atoms, but you are always safe with just hydrogens. So we could say that this is NH3. Then we just gotta do the last one. So we do the same exact idea here. What element in the middle could have the three bonds and the two lone pairs? Well, see how many valence electrons it had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven A or 17 is uh, the halogen group. Now, just know that fluorine is not going to be one of these because fluorine cannot have an expanded octet, but chlorine can, right? Iodine and bromine can have the expanded octet. This central atom has two, four, six, eight, ten electrons. So um, whether you want to choose bromine, sure. Whether you want to choose chlorine, that's fine with me. Um, or iodine, doesn't really matter. I guess, I guess maybe we'll put, I don't know. I guess we'll put um, which, which I guess the least electronegative. So maybe we'll put CL, whoop, oh boy, CL in the middle. And then let's just mix it up a little bit, right? I won't put the H's, but maybe I have to put a lesser uh, electronegative element around the edges because that's the rules. Always the least um, electronegative element in the center and the more electronegative atom in the middle. So maybe if I just wanted to do all halogens, I could have iodine in the middle. That's the least electronegative out of all of the atoms in the halogen group. And then you could say that each one of these could either be, you know, all bromines or all chlorines. And the chlorines, you know, they have the octet as well, but I'm not going to draw um, all the dots around them. So this one would just be I, Cl3. And there you go. So these are just three examples, but there's so many other ones. Let me know in the comments if you have any other examples, and we can kind of check to see if those are good. Um, I hope this helped. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. Tell your friends, tell your classmates. Just gets the word out there in the YouTube universe that this channel exists. Thank you so much for all your support, and we love helping you guys out. We really want you to do well in your classes, so just keep using the videos, all right? 
I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.